Rebecca donated her dead brother's face so another man could live. She's about to meet him on 60 Minutes. Do you mind if I touch it? No, not at all. For the first time. Wow. Seeing, touching, feeling her brother's face. This is the face that I grew up with. On another man. The year was 1997. In Virginia, Richard Norris lost half of his face in a shotgun accident. Fast forward to 2012. In Maryland, Joshua Aversano was run over and killed by a minivan while crossing the street. In March of 2012, the lives and legacies of these two men and their families crossed paths in miraculous fashion. Rebecca Aversano and her family decided to donate her brother's face to be transplanted. And Richard Norris was the man given a second chance with a new face. Our guest is the surgeon who led the surgical team at John Hopkins University and performed what had been thought by many to be the impossible. He is certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery and the Chair of Department of Plastic Surgery at NYU Langone Medical Center. Let's welcome Dr. Eduardo Rodriguez to Midpoint. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. How are you? I'm excellent, Doctor, and I imagine that still to this day there's a man who feels that he owes you his life and certainly the, the people that were involved in this. I know that doctors and surgeons love a challenge, but when you first saw the damage to Richard Norris' face and you walked into that, emer that, that operating room and knew what you were about to do, did you have any second thoughts at all that it might succeed? You always have second thoughts, and this was a case that had not been attempted before at this level. So despite all our rehearsals, despite being very confident that we could carry this out, there's always a certain degree of uncertainty. There's nothing, there's never 100%, especially when we had not performed an operation of this type in the past. So not having performed it then, you went through all of these rehearsals. What were the, the one or two things that you knew you had to focus on in order to make sure that this man had the best chance of survival? The primary focus, focus was to be able to procure the face in a safe fashion. Keep in mind that when we are working on a donor, the donor can become unstable and we could potentially lose the face and all the organs. So staying very focused on the procurement of the face was goal number one. And then goal number two was to remove Richard Lee Norris's existing face to limit uh, overall time and ischemia time and transfer the face from the donor to the recipient in a predictable manner. And then once we transfer the face, connect all the blood vessels, perfuse the face, and allow for reliable vascularity. So all that had to happen in a reliable manner, and it surely did. A 36-hour surgery, when it was done, when you stepped back that one moment from the operating table after it was done, were you confident that you had done everything right and that the face would take? Or did you still have maybe a second thought? No, at that point, I did not have any second thoughts whatsoever. I was pretty confident, and any concerns that I had going into the operation of the potential obstacles that would present themselves, and obviously we, we rehearsed in a manner looking at every potential obstacle that could present itself, and nothing negatively happened. Actually, it went as smooth as we ever expected, so we were very fortunate. It's fair to say, I would guess, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but the physical part of this is one thing, but the psychological of it, that Norris would have this face on, he would have to look at this, care for this, but just going forward in his life, that in itself had to be so deep and fascinating. You had to make sure that psychologically he was able to handle this. That's correct. And that's probably one of the more difficult components of this operation because we're going into new horizons of science and medicine and despite a very lengthy and methodical consent process, you don't really know how the patient's going to accept the face, and you don't really know what the reaction will be once they look in the mirror for the first time. Despite the fact that we know that he will look a lot better and function more normal, it's totally unpredictable as to what's going to happen the first time that patient looks in the mirror. We prepare them for that moment. We rehearse with the patient. They go through very extensive psychosocial uh, evaluations for over a year, but still you don't know until the day that they look in the mirror what their response will be. What does this mean then to disfigured soldiers, for instance, and other people? Because as groundbreaking as this is, how much of a door does this open now for other people to be able to do this, and how quickly might this all begin to take shape? Well, it's a very promising procedure. There's no question about it. I think what we have seen now when we look back 
at the last several years, the first face transplant was performed in 2005. And now we have confirmed that the actual surgical procedure has surpassed science. So technically, it can occur very predictably. The concern that we have now for our soldiers, despite the fact that we can perform this operation, despite the fact that they can look better and function better, we are still working very diligently to reduce the amount of immunosuppressive medication. These patients do require medication for life, just like an organ a transplant recipient. So we're trying to reduce the amount of medications because a face transplant is not a life-saving procedure like a kidney or heart or a liver. So we want to reduce some of the toxic effects of those medications. But this will be something that will be offered to all patients. And our primary objective is to care for the wounded warrior and to care for our first responders. We only have about 30 seconds left. What has Richard Norris, when Richard Norris saw his face and you were there, what was his reaction to you and what was your reaction? Well, it was a very emotional moment. I, I must say that I was pretty apprehensive uh, with the mirror in my hand. I did not know what to expect. And his parents were there. His siblings were there. A number of us were there just to be supportive, depending on the reaction that uh, was coming. And as soon as he looked in the mirror, he touched his lips and he touched his nose and his eyelids, something that he had not had for a long time. Mm -hmm. Very emotional. He looked at me, he thanked me, and he hugged me. Doctor, you have done amazing work. You and your team, you're to be congratulated, and we can only hope that this moves forward and makes the lives for so many other people better down the road. Dr. Eduardo Rodriguez, thank you so much. And again, congratulations on the groundbreaking work. Thank you. All right, our pleasure. Wow, what a story. Coming up next, the story of money with Steve Beeman, our daily on Midpoint.